I'd like to compare my, my profession with what happens around me. People avoid doctors because they think that going to a doctor means spending money. We are the only persons who pay economy fee or economy fare and want first class service. And then, of course, the feeling that the best things can only be done outside Nigeria. So if you have a tough case in court, you don't travel abroad to go get a lawyer. The problem is not with the patient because no one can, you can't do out of pocket medical expenses because illness does not choose your financial capital. My name is Dr. Innocent Okawo. I am from Edo State. I got my basic medical training at the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. So I was born and raised up in Edo State. Went to primary school, secondary school, and university in Edo State. I moved into Lagos and got my diploma in anesthesia and intensive care in Unilag. And then I got my diploma in family medicine from the Nigerian Public Medical College. So I am fully bred and trained in Nigeria. Part of the problem is that Nigerian doctors are inclusive. We have a terrible documentation culture. A few times when I talk to my colleagues, I tell them that, look, we don't write what we don't document what we do. No two surgeries are done the same way. I'm going to remove an appendix, for example. It's possible that the tip of the appendix is stuck to the bowel, and you had to maneuver yourself to free it before you could remove it. Most of the time, when you're documenting your surgery, you just say you discovered the appendix, it was inflamed, you removed it, you tied the necessary vessels, and that's all. You won't add the additional thing you had to do with just straightforward documentation. That's in a small um, scale. But that is also part of why people think we can't do many of the things we ask. Because we just do them and they are either lost in our hospital records and that's all. Another thing is the fact that some people are ashamed to tell others that they've had a surgery. There's um, a vicious triangle of ignorance, poverty, and disease. I mean, where there is poverty and ignorance, you expect lots of disease. And this is where we, <laughs> this is the place of ignorance and poverty. So you have a huge disease burden. But that's one challenge. So you pick up medical problems at very late stages because the patient is ignorant. Is Even when he finds out that he has a health problem, he, because of poverty, he doesn't go to the hospital on time. And then when all hope seems to be lost, they still end up in the hospital. And we must deal with it. And these are stages of illness that our colleagues in Europe and America don't get to see because they pick it up early and, and take care of it. That's a major challenge. So having to deal with complicated cases that could have been taken care of earlier, that's a major challenge. Yes, the symptoms come up when they are either small and in very delicate positions within the womb, maybe right in the cavity of the womb, which, which we call the endometrium, that can cause a lot of bleeding. Maybe in the muscle proper, that can cause severe menstrual pain. But at the very beginning, there are no symptoms. There may be no symptoms at the very beginning until they get either big enough to cause symptoms or are pushed into the uterine cavity to cause symptoms. Because diseases generally don't have symptoms in the early stages, that's why screenings are done, routine tests are done. 
again, property won't allow us to do routine screenings for our patients. So if we're able to do routine screenings and pick up these diseases at early stages, you can actually remove fibroids without opening up the patient. Really? Yes. How do you go about that? Um, Smart talked to me about uh, laparoscopy. You can do laparoscopic myomectomy. If the fibroid is small enough, you can put a pinhole through the novel, put a small telescope, see inside the, the person's body, and pick out and take out the fibroids through those small holes. Or you can shred the fibroid, pull it out through the small holes. It then goes on the same day or the next day. But that's if they are small enough. A woman's complaint depends on what is predominating. So if, if, if a woman has predominantly pedunculated subserosal fibroid, for example, she just has a big tummy, that's all. No menstrual pain, no heavy bleeding. If the woman has intramural fibroids, small ones, close to... She, she just has... Yes, so she just has severe menstrual pain. Because it's, it's, muscular, it's muscular cramps that causes menstrual pain. Menstrual pain. So she just, she just has severe menstrual pains. That's all. Drugs, yes and no. Because the fibroid growth is dependent on the, on the female hormone. So those drugs may also affect the womb itself or reproduction itself. Fibroid is a reality. Surgery is what nobody wants to go through. So those people just, they are, they are capitalizing on the fact that nobody wants to go on that good surgery to sell their, their products. You try, waste your time and money. In the long run, they, sh they shamefully go to have their surgery and, and, and keep their mouth shut. The African culture is very child-centered. That's um, them. For them, Good health is better than having children, so I think. So they so they prefer to just take out the womb and you have good health, rather than rather than have the have the womb and you still have issues. But for us, a woman with, that can't have a child, that woman is dead. That's the way we see it. So the quality of life of a woman without a womb in Africa is next to nothing. So to give the woman good quality of life is to take out meticulously get, get in the pick out as many fibroids as you can see take them out close the womb the, the body has a wonderful healing capacity and most of the women that we have left their wombs for have come back to have children so and they're happy and i guess the whole idea is to make our women happy not everyone can raise money um, so there are charities health related charities uh, one being the Irene Fibroid Foundation what has been done in that foundation is realizing that lots of women are suffering from this problem and they don't have money so what the foundation has done is to look for money so appeal to people's um, sense of pity and love for humanity to sponsor the uh, the the surgery no not the foundation okay, surgery now on women that can't afford yes okay. so it's it's not so the surgery is not free just that they have, they have sought out people to pay to pay okay okay for this year by God's grace we do at least so some some people have volunteered to say okay well i'll be paying for two free surgeries every year i'll be paying for one free surgery every year i'm paying for so someone is actually picking up the bill this i really like uh, the doctors coming together no really it's actually one doctor who uh, haven't identified the body, so he put together some other people. Go through it, 
long-term support. So that's what it's all about. While the doctors involved are asked to join, so so if if I join Doctor Annie to do to do a case for Iron Fiber Foundation, I won't ask for a surgeon, a surgeon's fee. That way, we can you know bring down the cost to the patient or to the end payer since the patient really can't pay. In this foundation, how many women do you tend to have a quitting? Well, from I'm quoting Dr. Ani. Dr. Ani is the arrowhead of the foundation. 200 every year. That comes to four every week on, on the average. I do more than 200 fibro surgeries every year. So, so someone can say. We have this health challenge. We want to do free this for a thousand people. And Doctor Okwawo, can you help us do this? Doctors naturally would do that. I also belong to the Association of Rural Surgical Doctors of Nigeria. What does Aspen do? Aspen will just come together, go to a remote, we'll go to a rural area and collect together surgical cases do them over a weekend maybe we'll start on a thursday and on sunday on sunday afternoon we're back to our practices any woman can grow a fibroid so um, it's an abnormality so you can't say everyone has the abnormality it's an abnormal growth so you can uh, any woman can grow a fibroid. Any woman who has a womb can grow a fibroid. Um, that's why the treatment for fibroid actually is to remove the womb. But because we have a very child-oriented culture, when well, I say our culture is child-centered, so African doctors, had to develop the skill to save the womb while removing the fibroids. To deal with the fact that the reason why most women remove fibroids is because they want to get pregnant. So, so African doctors, or doctors who deal with African patients had to develop the skill to be able to remove fibroids. With, for women, who still have use for their uterus. So if a woman, because fibroid actually affects all ages. Women of reproductive age, even women who have attained menopause, because there used to be this um, erroneous impression that if once a woman gets to menopause, the womb starts to shrink, the fibroid too shrinks and everything disappears. It depends on how big the fibroid was before she before she started menopause. Because if the womb starts to shrink and she has a big fibroid at menopause, the fact now that blood supply to the womb has been caught, I mean reduced dramatically, would mean that the fibroid isn't getting sufficient nutrients. So it will start to degenerate. That can cause pain and some other problems. Even even if the woman may have stopped bleeding, she can start bleeding again. So it's so a woman, any woman can grow fibroid. 